basically, I will be talking about our result about a new definition of genuine apartheid non locality. However, to explain why we use this new definition, not the old one, uh, I will go through first the old definition. And also, I will be talking a lot about entanglement, mostly because entanglement is, I find, easier to explain, easier to give an example for. And also, there is a new definition of genuine apartheid entanglement, which is very analogous. So it all fits together, but yeah, just keep in mind but that my results are about genuine multi part non locality. Maybe I will also mention, which I didn't before, uh, the results that I'm talking about are with uh, Marco Liberino, uh, Xavier, uh, Xavier, whose name I will not pronounce, but he's from Munich, <laughs> uh, and Fiona. Uh, which I don't remember the last name, unfortunately, and also Remy Gushawush, my supervisor. Yeah, okay. So uh, now my my thing is not working. So the definition of entanglement, non locality, standard stuff. Uh, what I was saying is that those, what I want to like focus you, uh, your attention to is that with uh, both entanglement and locality, it gives you a way of determining whether a system can be fully described just in terms of its part, or do you have to consider the whole system to explain its dynamic statistics? So uh, for example, if this, uh, like the, the, the probability distribution would actually follow local hidden variable model, then you could just collect some statistics on B, some statistics on A, and you, could, you would have in that way a full description of a system not no not no new effects in the sum. However, if you have like for example an entanglement state, entangled state, then in the measurements of, of both seem random, measurements of Alice seem random. But if you look at the collective statistics, then the pattern emerges, and that's the point. So I want to like to re for you to remember that this is kind of an intuition because this will be crucial later to generalize this. To multi part of case. Okay, with multi part of case, let's first look at what happens if you use a standard definition of non locality and entanglement for just multi part of case. So let's say you have like some particles or something, and only two of them are either entangled or non local, whichever you like. If you consider this system as a whole and you ask, okay, is this system of particles entangled? Then you can say yes to this question just based on the fact that two of the particles are, are entangled. Because yeah, okay. So if you divide it like that, this is your system A, this is your system B, then this would be entangled. You will not be able to uh, write it in like a product, a, pro, a product state. You have to, you have like entanglement. However, it's not that satisfactory, I would say, because uh, it doesn't convey kind of a spirit of what was definition like for bipartite case about. So uh, in a sense, this is like an intuition to introduce a new definition. So this is like a standard definition of genuine multipartite non-locality entanglement. And what it is about is that you require that the effect that you cannot write it in a separate a separable way. So as a product state or like in the hidden variable model, no matter how you divide the particles. Whichever way you divide them, you cannot do that. So formally, it is described like this. So this is genuine multipartite entangle multi entanglement, where you have a sum over every subset, non-trivial subset of your particles, and the same for non-locality. This is genuine multipartite and non-locality. Okay. Examples. Two easiest examples, for example, uh, for of genuine multipartite entangled state, which you can also uh, have a genuine multipartite non local behavior, RGHZ and W. However, I want to focus on this example. Uh, this is also a GME state. And uh, if you perform measurements as such on every party, then you the the behavior will be non-local, genuinely multipartite non-local. Uh, why I want to focus on this example, I will explain in a second. Because 
what I want, want to ask now is, can this new definition, like the, the GME and GMNL, detect this end partedness? So the fact that you cannot truly, you have to describe a system as a whole. So can the, the detect that, okay, the state is truly three parted, for example, for this case, or the non-locality cannot be divided into two and one part in the sense. And the answer is no. And then that's the core issue behind introducing a modification to this uh, to this definition, to the definition of G GME and GML. I want to stress that for uh, this example, you cannot do this. Or? Yeah, I will show you in a second. Okay. Yes. Uh, but I want to stress that if you have like if you want to perform some, I don't know, uh, calculations or uh, you want to use GME for quantum key distribution, the old definition works perfectly. I'm not saying that the old definition is wrong, rather that I'm more interested in detecting whether something can be described in parts or is it like, do you need to actually consider the whole system? This is what I'm interested in and the old definition is not sufficient for this. And now to the example, what goes wrong? So we go back to this example state and let's perform such a substitution of our description. This is just a description change. It is not cor corresponding to any physical operation. But also, it is also reversible, right? Obviously, it's just we label things differently. So this is just from binary to, uh, I don't know how this system uh, is called for for path or whatever. Yes. So you go and like. Okay. Zero, zero goes to zero, zero. The first is pretty sim simple. Then zero, 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 zero. One goes to one, zero, one. Two goes to one, zero, and so forth. You will, you will get this state. Those two states are exactly the same, just your description of the situation changes. However, now I don't know if it will be visible uh, perfectly, but uh, you can see that here I highlighted zero zero in red, and if you see the blue ones are zero 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 one 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 zero zero one 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 one. The same pattern is true for the state that begin uh -huh. and end with one. So you have the ATM. So you can take out zero zero one one in the front. It's five plus uh, on the part on the. Then now party one and six, so qubit one and six, and then you are left with the state, which you can also describe as a tensor product of two pi pi plus. So to conclude, what the old definition is saying is that the this state, which is like composed of three two partite state, is generally tripartite entangled, which Puts into question whether we should use genuine in that sense. I I, I would say okay, it's debatable. So in case in this case also, like if, this is also reversible. Yeah. So if you have two uh, two Bell state product of two Bell state, you can make it a genuine multiple identity. Exactly, exactly. I just put it like that because it's symmetrical. And to explain, uh, okay, so to showcase how it looks, uh, it is like that. So A and C share one this. A and B share this, and B and C share this. And if you take this state and you perform this description change, you get a genuine bipartite entangled state from bipartite states. So this operation is not free, according to that definition. Free? What? What do you mean free? Like in case of GME, yes. uh, if you relabel this way. Mm -hmm. Then, like if you relabel such that this three products, uh, three state uh, product state of this three real state goes to this side, then it is GME, but this one is not. Yes. So you can go from. Yes, exactly. You can go from one to the other without GME to GME. Yes, without uh, with just changing Which your description. The case. Yes, I mean it depends what you want, like. Right, because if you just care about, I don't know, I want to perform some operations, and I don't like you want to per, like put some protocol to use. 
the old definition is completely fine. But if you care about this n part tightness, uh, then the old definition is not sufficient to detect it because you can cheat it. In a the original description is the entangled state. The, this, yeah, this is uh, generating multipartite entangle. So in, a, in this case, generating tripartite entangle. And it is actually just by changing your description, you can set it into pre, uh, pre tensor product of pre bar bipartite state. Changing so, after labeling. Yes, really. You cannot change anything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you, this does not change any physics. It, now it is. No, it's physics because you have more particles now. The C is of three. No. Yes. No, but, but you don't know whether you have more particles here or not. Because uh, you are working in quantum formation. Because you, each particle can have two quantum degrees of freedom. Yes. You don't know. You mean each party has two degrees okay, okay, let's not talk about particles. Let's talk about the degrees of freedom. So if I have one. Yes. What? I, I cannot separate it like physically. How do you know that? Well, it doesn't matter what I know. I, know. Uh, I just have like one degree of freedom that I cannot separate. I cannot break this uh, that's two. That's what I said. Like, okay, so if you care about operations, then the old definition works com completely fine. But you cannot certify that you cannot, uh, you cannot, so you would have to have additional information that you cannot do that. If you put this information, then yes, okay, it's tripartite. No, by this, by basically, you put the information, it is tripartite, and then you check if it's tripartite. Well, I can also reverse it and say that I need additional information to be able to split it into degrees of freedom. No, you don't have to because you want to certify that for sure something is right by then. And I'm here showing you that in some physical cases it is not. No, videos like this is I think this 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 operation is costly. Right? You, you need to know this thing, otherwise how will you know you don't relabel it? Like this relabeling is completely fine. You don't have to know physics. My point is that. GME does not allow you to detect whether something is like truly tripartite because you could, in principle, cheat it by using this. Maybe you have something that is actually you cannot divide, but I'm not asking whether something is not really not tripartite. I'm asking whether GME can be used as a criterion to determine if something is tripartite. So, original state should not be an English. No, I mean it depends. It depends on the whole system. So, like, if physically you cannot separate it, and or you you know that okay, you have one lap here, one lap here, one lap, one lap here, then no, it doesn't no, matter. Separate. It, it is se separate, but uh, there is entanglement here still. So, like, yeah. because those, those states are entangled. So, operationally, you it's completely fine. It's just a question about whether you can certify that something. Cannot be divided in any way. Phi plus one to six product. I mean, product with the phi plus two three. Then yes. you see it is not an entangled. No, no, like but phi plus itself is entangled. Yeah, but it is exactly entangled. But the whole system, or actually state, is not the entangled. Yes, it, it can be the case, but that, I'm not saying that I can say for sure that it's not because, as Remy said. It can be like a physical situation where you can have a system which is not divisible, and this will does not make sense. You can always relate it, it as, as such, but those separations will not never constitute any physical separation. In that sense, it doesn't really matter. But what I'm saying is that you will not, you are not able to just be sure that someone someone doesn't give you a bipartite state that falls out of track right like genuine move part of track. Yeah, you can go on like so because yeah. I entered like <laughs> oh, go on and the heads. So like so what you call uh generally tripartite entangle is something that cannot be split in this way. I mean I don't like the genuine I, I would use a different name if it was up to me. I like honestly. Uh, because I think it introduces. No, no, I'm asking about, I'm asking about your definition. Yes. So it's like generally multipartite entanglement is uh, something that cannot be divided. Yes, exactly. Right. Yes. Right. And, and uh, right. So now you uh, say that the, this you don't like this name. Uh, I don't like it for both of the definitions. Uh, yes. So it, uh, like uh, um, because genuine kind of suggests that it's the only one we should care about, which of course. 
<laughs> or you could say fully. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. Okay, this uh, is just important. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm just saying that the old definition is not suitable for the things that I'm interested in. That that is all, all thing. Like I'm not saying the old definition is wrong. There are also some questions in the chat. Are? Uh, yeah, they are from the beginning. Okay, because the the mic was off. Okay, so yeah, and uh, to GMNL. You can also, okay, so those are the uh, uh, observables that I presented you before, but you can actually split them as a tensor product of those. And then it looks like this. Okay, Alice, for example, performs those measurements on this state and Bob performs these measurements on this state and so on and so forth. So, for example, if you look at this. Can I ask my question? Yes. yes. So, uh, as we are writing the state like informational, like we have beats. If you have beats, you like zero, you write zero and one, or if you have trees, you like zero, one, two. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, are we losing information physical? No, it's a system. It's inversible. Like you can go from one to the other. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it seems that you are losing physical information of the degrees of this. If you no. relabel your information, but but you can leave them in. So okay. so are you use, losing physical information when you put something in computer in decimal system and it translates to binary? Uh, no, I, it does not. Does not that, that's a, that is a problem. That like that is the language change. Yeah. Yes. And also you are you are changing the language. Like we are using a language where you have this freedom. You can relabel relabel one as. Zero one or two as yes. one zero or three. But you can always do one. one. You can always call, for example, zero but, as but, yellow. But one as green is not about number. Yes. So it you can yes you can relabel uh, zero as green, yellow uh, one as yellow, and so on and so forth. That doesn't really matter. Yes. Uh, but it still doesn't change the fact that you can, in principle, do that. Which means that if you care about Three part tightness. This will always be a possibility for that state. So you can either have a like truly genuine tripartite state, we just have like a four degrees of freedom in each particle, and there is no division there. You can do that. Like I'm not saying that you can. I'm just asking whether GME is a sufficient condition a criterion for detecting it, and it's not because it can be cheated in such a way. Yeah. Yes, that's my point. Yes, and yeah, coming back to this, this is, as you may recognize, CHSH. And you, basically what is going on is that actually this GME, GMNL is just uh, free CHSH uh, behaviors. Uh, free behavior that maximally violate CHSH. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Yes, okay. So now to how to define and a different definition that would would be robust to such cheating methods. In so this is what I call LOSR GME to differentiate it. Uh, again, it's not my name. Uh, basically, what you do is that, so for example, for tripartite case here, you consider a network where you have bipartite sources. And you have okay three parties. And there is some classical correlation between parties. Sources can be also correlated, but that's like a detail. You can get rid of this correlation. That does not. Yeah. They can also be correlated classically. What you require? Actually, they are not this. Yeah, they don't have. I can sh I can show you later. There is just a trick because you don't assume a dimension of the system, and that allows you to who, uh, to take the dependence on lambda from the state to operations uh, performed by parties. That 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 is just a mathematical trick. I I could have just drawn. Uh, the, the arrows here, but I wanted not like well, I didn't want to. I didn't want it to be too clutter. Yeah, but basically this and the only thing. Okay, and yeah, parties can perform any operation they want, which is the only requirement that's like physical and local. And also, parties cannot communicate with each other classically. And now the claim is that if through such a scenario you cannot reproduce row. 
a, a given state row, then this state row is LOSR G GME. I stress again, this is true when this cannot reproduce this. This is like the definition by a neg negation, basically. And with LOSR GMNL, so generating multiparty non-locality, it's basically the same thing, but you swap uh, sources of quantum states for a sources of some post-quantum correlations. The only thing that you require is that it's no signal. And then you just basically, again, if a given behavior cannot be reproduced by such a network, then this behavior is LOSR human. This is how you do it. So, so wait, the, the previous definition was given in the paper by Malas Quest, and yes. this one in the paper by Mark. Yes, exactly. But were these papers like dependent or? Uh, this was first. Okay, so the second one was based on this one. Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess, I, I don't know. I Wait, is there? I mean, the, there is one uh, common uh, offer, so I'm guessing that uh, it's not a coincidence. Yeah. Because it's weird that if you, I mean, if you define one thing, then you can define the other one. Right? Yes, yes, in a sense, yes, but I think, I feel like here they mostly care about, like, okay. from the angle that we worked before, so like generation of states. Okay. So, like, they introduced the definition, but they really mostly cared about, okay, whether you can generate something in mm -hmm. the network or not. And here they truly cared about the, the thing that I'm talking like the end perfect. So in the previous scenario, you can produce three perfects. Uh entangles. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So yeah, but basically here uh, this corresponds to the situation that uh, was before. So like if you have here five plus, five plus, five plus, then you can reproduce the, the state that I gave you an example before. So this is not that this this example is not a lowest RGME. However, there are states which are. Okay, so now we come to our results. Uh, first, a quick recap on what are the graph states, because they are mostly about the graph states. Graph states are states which you create from an abstract graph. So you set an abstract graph. This is not connected to any like physical situation. You just have some vertices. The number of vertices corresponds to uh, the number of particles. And then you construct operators from this graph. So there is an algorithm, which I will show you in a second. And you define a graph state as a unique eigenvector of all of the operators with eigenvalue 1. So, okay. So we first start with from vertex 1. We put G1. And we here put x, which is a Pauli matrix. Then we look, OK, what, what are the neighbors of 1? Here, there are both 2 and 3 are neighbors of 1, because they are connected. So if they are neighbors, we put z. So x1, z2. Now we look, OK, is 1 connected to 3? It is. We put z3. We go to g2. We put x on the second. And we ask, OK, again, whether 2 is connected to 1? It is. So we put z here. But it's not connected to pre, so we can put identity here, and again for G3. In general, the, this is the, uh, the equation for it. So GI here is you consider vertex XI, and you look at the neighbors of this is a neighborhood of I, and for every neighbor of I, you put Z on the corresponding qubit, and you require that everything is subjective. You can also do it for qubits. If your local dimension is higher, then you consider a multigraph, basically. So you have more connections, and then this, those more connect, these connections correspond to the power to which you uh, you take the generalized Pauli matrices. But that's like a detail. Okay. Now, uh, states which can exhibit like the LOSR GMNL behavior. First of all, we prove that GHZ for n particles or any local dimension, which is a prime number, is a lowest RGML. We also prove it for a faster state, which is a state, uh, uh, which is a graph state that corresponds to a line graph, where here you have you can have more connections be because it's also for uh, for yeah for arbitrary local prime dimension. And third. We have graphs like this, which is a line graph 
with just legs of length one, which we call centipede states because if you put head here and there are like legs here. Yeah. So basically for th them, we can also prove that they are LOs are GML. Uh, this doesn't mean that any other graph state is not uh, LFR GML. It's just the method we use is what best suited for those. However, we can also say something about general graph states. So let's say we have a graph like this. And what can we say about this graph state that corresponds to this graph? So well, when, yeah. whenever you have different kind of level, like in the state, if you have 0, 1, 2, 0, uh, sorry, 2, 3, mm -hmm. this kind of state will have some problem in GMN? Like, I, I, I uh, no, the, the problem, the, no, 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 no. So, like, okay, there is a hypothesis. There is a claim that the GME definition, the old GME definition, LOSR GME definition, GME, they correspond for two and three local dimension and possibly for prime dimension, local dimension. But uh, the proof, like there is a proof out there, but no one really can certify that it's true. It's weird. Like oh. uh, uh, there is a claim that uh, for two and three, those two definitions correspond uh, for like qubits and trees, but I wouldn't like bet on this being true. Yeah. So, okay. So what you can here do is find the longest induced path in the graph. Uh, path is a, just a line graph. Mm, so yeah, that, that's very simple. And induced means that this path has to be a subgraph of this graph, which is uh, why is it important? I will explain by showing you how you can find an induced graph, uh, induced path. So you start from one vertex and you go to the neighbor, to the neighbor. And here, okay, which way you go, you can pick one. But if you pick one, this vertex is on, uh, uh, you cannot go to it later on because if you went there, both of these paths would have to be present in your, in, the, in your subgraph that you consider. And then this would not be a path. So you have to find a line that, that goes through this graph, but each time, you exclude neighbors of this of, of a given vertex to ensure that what you get, the subgraph is actually a path. So you go here, here, you have to exclude this. You go here, because of this, you have to exclude this. You go here, and last choice, whichever one of them you choose, the, the others are excluded. If you find the longest induced path, the length of it is also called a detour number a graph. Uh, then so again, the tour. Tour? yeah, like like a tour, like a trip, but detour, like a... yeah, 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 detour, detour, like this. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And if you find this number, what you can actually do is that for each qubit that corresponds to like the vertex that you didn't pick, you perform a measurement in the zig basis. And you look at the probability distribution for those measurements that when we give you the result. So if you measure the state zero, basically, if you measure the state zero everywhere here, then you look at the behavior of the rest. And if you measure such, then the state that you are left with is actually a cluster state. So here, I think is that one. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is a nine vertex uh, cluster state, uh, and so it can in it cannot be reproduced by sources of uh, n partite sources. The partite uh, the sources has to be at least nine partite, and so this is also true for the whole graph. So the whole graph you cannot in that way certify this that is it is. Uh, LOSR GML because you have to, we would have to certify that uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Uh, it cannot be reproduced by 13 partite sources, but you can say that it cannot be reproduced by eight partite sources. In the sense, like this is some additional information. It is not like complete information, but it, so it assumes that if the general, uh, the total distribution, the correlations are GML, then the those that you obtain by 
uh, implementing Z measurements yeah. for those red yeah. uh, things. It's also GML. Yes, 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 but this is kind of a post selection thing. So you just can measure whatever. You just perform Z measurement here, and then you consider only the probability is sure. probably when you get yeah, it. I think I understood that like it's uh but is it obvious that it's, it will always be uh, GML? If one so if you consider from GML yes. distribution, then you get a GML one. Yes. Yes, because you don't have measurements. Mm -hmm. No, oh, that cannot be. No, you you so you here here you have to certify like this is not a GMNL, like this is GMNL of this nine partite state. So this is like genuinely nine partite. You can certify that this is genuinely nine nine partite state, not that this is GMNL. Because like yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I think I understand. I'm just talking about the proving strategy. So I assume it's like by computation. So you assume that the default distribution is GMNL, and then after no, 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 no. It's not like that. Uh, you just show that if you perform measurements here and you get zero everywhere, then the state that we are left with is a cluster state. And you can yes. perform a proof of it for it that it's it's not, uh, it is like LOSR generally nine part type. No, no, yes, no. exactly. Yes. yes. So the whole state has to be because the, the probability distribution will not be divisible in a sense. Yeah, but I guess you want to prove that this state is also not uh, LOS SR GMNL. No, 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 no. So we would like we would like to prove that it is, but we can't because we are too bad. So what's your what's your point? So what I'm saying is that you we are not able to prove that this state is LOSR GMNL, but we can lower the part tightness of sources to say that okay. We don't know if it, it can or cannot be uh, generated or like the, the yeah with with uh, 13 partite sources, mm -hmm. which would be GMNL statement for the whole thing. But we can say that it cannot be uh, reproduced with eight partite sources. Of the okay, so, I'll talk to you later. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, now a little bit about how we prove it. I will not go into details, but basically we use inflation technique, which is just uh, considering a network and then constructing an abstract network, which also consists of copies of the original parties and original sources, which behave in the same way. And you can leverage this to show a contradiction coming from the assumption on the original network. So you can assume, for example, that, I don't know, GHZ can be generated in the pre this pre-partite network, and you can show a contradiction, okay, that if you assume this, then on this network, there is a certain, you contradict certain mathematical statement which should be true, and so your assumption is wrong. So to put it, okay, so you start from some true statement, it's usually like some inequality, mathematical inequality, and you find a corresponding, so a, 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 an example, a specific inequality for your inflation. Then you take your assumption about the original network, you go from one, from one inflation to the other, and you show that the state from the assumption, something follows which contradicts this. And this has to be true always, so your assumption is wrong. Basically, this is a proof method, but I will not go into details because to show you how it works, I would have to have additional 45 minutes. Yes, uh, but the, the thing that we use here for two statement is a monogamy of non-signal correlations. So this is like this. So basically, if you have spatially separated parties A, B, and C, then this, like this whole thing, the expression is bounded by four. Uh, I don't I don't have any like nice intuition to explain it why maybe you have because it's your paper. <laughs> yeah, but basically this is true. So if you get like maximal correlations in A B, then A and C have, have to be uncorrelated. That is the statement. And what we can show is that through those inflation, we can show that CHSH is uh, equal to two square root of two from our assumption and that this correlator is actually one. So if you put it together, it's two square root of two plus two, which is larger than four. So you have a contradiction and you prove that something cannot be reproduced in this network. 
Okay, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Vijus. Do we have questions? Yes. Can I have a question? So, how it was with the higher dimensions? So, it's like, uh, so uh, it's proven with like higher Okay, uh, with higher dimensions. So, uh, this can be, this is for uh, any prime local dimension, this is called central thing. But for like LOSR GMNL, this is for any prime dimension, okay. this is for any prime dimension. This is still not. It depends on how big of a motivation we will have to generalize it. In principle, it could be like it, I don't see any reason that it's, it wouldn't work for any prime local dimension, but we still don't have it. But why, why do we use prime? Uh, because the, the monogamy works for any beam. Yes, 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 yes. So here I I would assume okay. So I I said it like just just to be kind of covered uh, because. Here we use certain statements which are uh, so. Um, here we use the fact that even if you have like more connections here, if the dimension is prime, then you can through unitary operations like make it so that the lines like the, the connections are only like singular. Okay. So that that's the point. But maybe you can still perform this proof even if you have like more connections. Uh, here, I would say that it is probably true for any local dimension, but I haven't checked that like yet because I'm now writing the proof like properly. So like, the proof is there, but we kind of, like I, I kind of assumed a lot. So now, now I'm I'm rewriting it nicely. Maybe it is actually true for any. Thank you. Yes. So what about the subspaces? What was the the problem? Is the inflation uh, So this requires so for example uh, you can already see that from the thing that we can prove ghz is also uh, corresponding to a graph state which is just like a uh, one node that is connected to everyone every other node uh, that those nodes are unconnected to each other so like it's a star graph and so it's the, like this thing, right? uh, yes in a sense yes like a centipede with just like mm -hmm. yes exactly However, the problem, so uh, as you can see, for all of those we can, the common factor is that there are no cycles in the graph. There is what, uh, no cycles. Yeah, but what has to do with the, with the subspaces in which you don't have any graph? I, I already, I, I'm getting to it. So if you have like a, 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 a vertex which is connected only to one other vertex, it's stabilizing operators, uh, stabilizing operator, has only two non-trivial uh, entries. Mm -hmm. And that's key because less non-trivial uh, uh, less non-trivial uh, entries you have, the more freedom you have in the inflation technique. So you can go through different inflations. So for example, if here you would ha have only stabilizing operators which are tripartite, right? then you cannot do anything because uh, you start from okay, so you have to relate one, so you have to relate somehow original network to this, and everything is tripartite. So in a sense, you always like th those correlations always see the whole network. Like this is hand wavy very much, but basically that's the, 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 the that's the point. The more non-trivial uh, non-trivial matrices you have, the less freedom of choosing inflation you have, so your you cannot get constant constricted to like working with only certain inflations and in fact for a cyclic graph so just like uh, for five parties so if you have like five parties which are connected in a cycle it's no like you cannot use inflation technique you just for this uh, with only like two copies maybe for with larger you can but with two copies you cannot and coming back to the subspaces subdata subspaces have less generators which make it so that if you want them genuinely multi-parted entangled, they have to have more, more non-trivial terms. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem. Sense. Yes. So in a sense, like for some you can do it, but like even for the simple example of G GME subspace for four qubits, I don't know how to do it. So for but you, you just said that like for some you can do it. So yes, for some you can do it. Yes. So you have some subspaces for which you uh, in a sense, yes. Basically, in your proof, you don't use certain stabilizing operators, then you can claim that you actually do it on for subspace. Yeah. And there are certain examples like that. Yes. 
So it might work for all the. So if you have these grass states, so you should you, mm -hmm. you have the tool. Yes. But you use some of the stabilized operators. You, you might be able to say that like for subspaces stabilized by only all the zones that you use for the tool, mm -hmm. you will be able to prove what you want to do. No? Yes. So maybe it's better to uh, phrase it like this instead of like talking about grass states. Yes, maybe. But the problem was that okay, so. You would have to specify because the proof is quite general. So you would have to specify, okay, for those scenarios, you actually don't need every stabilizing operator. So you actually consider a subspace. You could say that, but uh, it's just, I don't know, like you don't have any general thing. So it is kind of like a trivial, or sometimes it, like, it just comes up, but it's not, there is no pattern that I've seen. It's just so, sometimes happens. And yeah. Sounds more general. Yeah, in a sense, yes. I I was also like following in the steps of people that like came before because even in like Otfried's paper, they could have just said, "Oh, it's for uh, subspaces," because they also don't use every stabilizing operator, but but stabilizing operator, but they didn't. But yes, that is true. It's more general. Okay. Do we have more questions? Maybe from the online audience. You, I actually, I mean, this graph could state. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, describing the entanglement, right? Yeah. Uh, it, uh, and it has a, some sort of shape and topology. Yes. But when you change the basis, that topology changes. Yeah. Change yes, yes, yes. But you you have like certain local uh, local unitary operations which transform one graph into another, such that there exists a local unitary which transforms one graph state to the other. So, for example. This is called local complementation. If you act on this vertex with local complementation, you would connect those two things. And there exists like set of local unitaries, which you can perform on this graph state to get a graph state, which corresponds to a graph with connection here. So there is any like a specific relation between uh, between two graphs by changing the basis? So, so in a sense, some graph states, some graph states are just unitary equivalent to each other. Yes. Some are not, but yeah. So for example, for if you want like a, a graph state that is generally multipartite entangled for four parties, there are only two uh, in equivalent ones with local unitary. One is GHZ and the other is cluster. Yeah. And there are the rest is unitary equivalent. Okay, any final question? Okay, in this case, I think we can thank the speaker again.